Hi folks and welcome to another salient process technical tutorial on Automation Anywhere. In this edition we're going to look at uh, slow web pages and what I mean by a slow web page is if we have a web page in front of us and we enter some data into it and we hit a submit button or some other button the response from that web page is usually not instantaneous. It can usually take a few moments for the response HTML data to come back from the remote web server and be displayed on your screen. Now, normally we expect this to be subsecond, but if we're doing some complicated processing at the back end or there's some uh, heavy load or there's some outage, it might take many seconds for a response to be received. So let's look at a sample web page. Let me bring up a sample web page. So here's a sample web page. Let me remove my debugging here and sample web page. So we hit the refresh button. Here's a sample web page. Now if I enter some data, hello world, and I hit the submit button, watch what happens. We've entered the submit button. We know that we see the button clicked, but it's going to take 10 seconds for the page to be processed. And after 10 seconds, we're going to get a refresh and now we're at page two. So in this example, I've contrived it such that when we uh, click the submit button on page one, it takes 10 seconds for page two to become visible. Uh, for those who wonder how I did such things, here's just a, a little bit of JavaScript. When the submit button is clicked, uh, we set a delay of the timeout, which is 10 seconds times 1,000 milliseconds. We delay for 10 seconds, and then we transition to the next page. So the bottom line is that there is a delay in between submitting one page and the second page becoming visible. There's a delay. Now, I've added this to simulate what happens with Automation Anywhere and slow pages. So now let's go look at an Automation Anywhere task. So in this task, <coughs> excuse me, in this task, I open up my web page. I set the text, hello world, into an input field. I click the submit button. And then when the next page appears, I set uh, text into the second data field. Okay, so let's try and run this and let's see what happens. So I click the Run button. We're now running our Automation Anywhere task. Up comes the web page. We enter some data into it. The button was clicked. Now the web page is going to take 10 seconds to respond, but we get an error. We get an error from Automation Anywhere saying that it was unable to find the target control on the web page, which was the control here into which to place data. And the reason for that is that in our Automation Anywhere task, we are immediately checking or accessing that second data field. But it took 10 seconds for that data field to appear and Automation Anywhere gave up because it couldn't find that field. So now let's look at how we can tune and tweak this. On Activities, which interact with Pages, there is an option down here called Wait for the Control to Exist. Now what that option does is it specifies an interval in seconds during which Automation Anywhere will try and find the target field. Now the default for this entry is 30 seconds. So I've contrived this down to 5 seconds, but the default is 30 seconds. So what that means is when Automation Anywhere is looking for a field in a web page, it will wait up to 30 seconds for that field to appear. Now in this example, I tuned it down to 5 seconds and my web page doesn't appear for 10 seconds. So that then resulted in the error appearing. All right, so if we got a slow web page, we can always, of course, tune this value higher. We can change the uh, amount of time that we're prepared to wait for the web page to appear. And we can uh, uh, crank that up to be the highest possible value that we are willing to wait. Now, what if an error occurs? What if we don't 
or we time out. Now we saw here that my task just failed. It went into the failed state. Now I'm going to illustrate here, and this won't be the last story on error handling, but I'm going to illustrate here how we can handle an error. So I drag an error handling command in here, and uh, this is going to begin an error handling block, and when we find an error, I'm going to run a task. And the task I'm going to run is one called show error. So I've got a task which is called show error, which is going to be run if and when we encounter an error. So I'm now going to move my set text into that handling block. Remove that comment, don't need that comment. And now in this uh, error handling block, that's where I'm going to try and set the value on the target web page. So let's save this and run it again. So once again, the browser web page is going to appear. Automation Anywhere is going to enter some data and hit the submit button. It's going to wait five seconds and then after five seconds, because the second page hasn't appeared, we now get a dialog box. This isn't a, a crash of the task. This is what my subtask says it should do. Detected an error. Please correct. So now I might insert my manual data. My manual data and hit the OK button, and the task would now proceed having entered manual data. So this is a, a quick example of two areas of automation anywhere that I wanted to bring to your attention. The first is the notion that on activities we can specify a timeout after which if the target control in the web page to which we wish to assign data does not appear for a configurable period of time, only then will an error be thrown. If the, if the web page is slow, we can crank this up. For example, if I crank this up to 15 seconds, and, oh, what did I do here? If I crank, let me change that, let me go back, edit, and crank this up to be 15 seconds, save it, and run it again. Now, let's run it again. Having cranked it up to 15 seconds, we should not have a problem because the timeout on the web page is 10 seconds. So now, if we wait 10 seconds, tick, 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 after 10 seconds, page 2 will appear, and that will then be detected by automation anywhere, and it inserts the second data, and that's the end of the task. So we can see that if we end up ha having situations where we have slow web pages, we can always crank up the amount of time that we're willing to wait to uh, for the page to exist. If we don't, and we encounter an error, we can bracket that command in an error handling routine and specify various actions that can occur, including running a subtask to, if nothing else, inform the user that they have to manually correct this item and then continue, or we can uh, handle it in other ways. I hope this has been a useful illustration, and I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Thanks, folks, and bye for now.